The story begins seven years ago, on the day a great disaster called the Dungeon Break occurred. Due to this incident, monsters appeared on the planet, and many people died that day, including our protagonist's parents. That was the day our protagonist lost everything and vowed to become a hunter and kill all the monsters. The scene shifts to the present day, where we see our protagonist visiting their parents' graves, upset for not fulfilling the promise of becoming a hunter. On the same day, the owner of the academy tells our protagonist that it would no longer be necessary for them to participate in the academy. The owner explains that members usually take a few months to awaken their powers and then debut as hunters. But our protagonist has been trying to debut for seven years, so the owner recommends not returning to the academy to continue wasting money and, in turn, ruining the academy's reputation. While at the cemetery, the protagonist laments, thinking about how their stats haven't increased even a little after all these years of training. He thought that after facing so many hardships, they cannot afford to abandon their promise. Therefore, he decided to run to the academy to talk to the owner. Once he arrives at the academy, the owner greets them and asks them to leave politely. However, the protagonist asks for one last chance to take the exam. The academy owner gets angry and accuses the protagonist of wanting a refund, but the protagonist tells them it's not about money. Immediately, the owner strikes the protagonist, calling them a liar and tossing them into the air. The owner tells them not to attempt to return to the academy because he is a loser. Our protagonist is on the ground, cursing fate for not giving them a unique trait when he hear a voice inside his head. The Trial Tower Praises Your Strong Will the protagonist wonders where this strange voice is coming from and then screams for help as they are sucked into what seems like a portal. Inside the portal, a message appears in front of the protagonist and the voice speaks again. The trial tower has selected all suitable candidates from Earth. Please select the difficulty level, rewards increase with the chosen difficulty. Our protagonist doesn't know what's happening, but their instincts tell them that this is the moment he has been waiting for their whole life, and he can't let it pass. You will enter the first floor of the trial tower shortly. The trial will begin soon, prepare yourself, challenger. We see our protagonist transported to a desert and only sees a sword buried in the sand. The theme of this trial is survival, and completing the trial rewards a unique trait. Upon hearing the reward, our protagonist knows he must do everything possible to pass the challenge and acquire the ability he's always desired. They quickly try to reach the sword when a monster emerges from the desert sand. The tutorial will begin soon at a difficult level. A earth golem has appeared. Our protagonist starts running for their life, thinking that the challenge given to them is impossible to overcome. The only option they have to survive is to run from the monster. We see the golem chasing them with great speed, while the protagonist, tired from running, slows down over time. As the protagonist thinks about how to defeat the golem, he remembers how everyone at the academy treated them like trash and think about their imminent pathetic death. Our protagonist refuses to end their life that way and changes direction to avoid being caught by the golem. While escaping, he remembers that golems can move due to the core that provides them with life energy, but the core is in a difficult-to-reach place. Our protagonist devises a plan and runs to the top of a hill to dodge the golem's attack at the last moment, knocking down the golem in the process. When the golem was on the ground, the young protagonist seized the opportunity to jump onto the golem's chest to strike its core repeatedly, causing a large crack in it. When our protagonist is about to deliver the final blow to the core, he is caught by the golem, which squeezes them as if they were a tiny ant until they suffocate. Our protagonist lets out a furious scream and then throws the sword directly into the golem's chest, successfully piercing its core. We see the golem collapse in pain as it loses its power source, and our protagonist stands up victorious and hears the voice say, Congratulations, you have passed the first trial of the tower. As a reward, you unlock your unique trait, gain 1500 points, and acquire the rapid recovery ability. 
You have been titled with the unique trait necromancy. Our protagonist can't believe it. Many years of training and suffering have passed, but he finally obtained their unique trait, and now they could finally become a hunter. He is then interrupted by a dark energy that emanates from the golem's corpse. Our protagonist wonders what it is when they hear the voice say, Your unique trait, necromancy, is activated. By absorbing the golem spirit, your ability has increased by 7%. We see the energy left by the golem's body entering our protagonist's body, who immediately feels the spirit within them. By absorbing the golem's energy, our protagonist can feel the golem's energy filling their body and their stats increasing. The protagonist thinks about the past seven years where they failed to gain any improvement during their training and how this new ability will allow them to become a hunter. Please proceed to the waiting room. The voice speaks as we see our protagonist entering the portal, and upon arriving on the other side, they collapse to the ground due to the wounds from their fight with the golem. We witness how all the wounds from the first challenge are healed in the waiting room, and the young person decides to go rest on the bed in the middle of the room. Our protagonist wonders what he should do now and if he will really be able to escape the trial tower. He contemplates the reason why the tower called them as a competitor, but without a clear answer, the young person decides to focus on surviving the remaining challenges. The time for the second floor trial is 23 hours and 21 minutes. You have entered the chat of the community in hard mode. The game master has entered the community chat in hard mode. Our protagonist sees how all the challengers who entered hard mode are confused, wondering why their stats return to normal or why there are people who weren't hunters in the tower. The game master mutes the chat for all the challengers and informs them that he has important information for those who pass the first level. The game master explains that the points they earned in the trial can be used to buy everything, not even a drop of water is free, and points can only be obtained through the trials. The Game Master has left the Hard Mode community chat. Our protagonist understands that without points, their life won't last long in the tower, and if he want to survive, he have to force themselves to participate in all the challenges ahead. The protagonist immediately thinks about opening the store to get a shield that would allow him to improve their performance in the next challenge and begins training with it until the second round begins, always aware that the other challengers have the advantage of being hunters in the past, so he can't fall behind. Time until the second floor trial, 3 seconds. 2 seconds. 1 second. You have entered the second trial of the tower. The theme of this trial is assassination, kill the leader of the orc tribe. We see our protagonist transported to a forest where, in the open field, they can see an orc village. The young person wonders if he will be able to enter a village full of enemies and defeat its leader. The protagonist decides to take the time to study the habits of the orc tribe and hides in some bushes to observe them. He manages to detect that the tribe consists of different warriors and that it would be difficult to defeat a strong orc like the orc hunter alone. Normally, defeating an orc village requires a group of mid-level hunters to ensure no one dies. Our protagonist decides to retreat to come up with a strategy to overcome this challenge as he thinks of a way to pass the second level of the trial tower. We see our protagonist collecting various pieces of wood and setting each piece on fire to store them in the item space. He realizes that he can store items in this space without losing durability or changing their state, so he immediately knows their plan will be successful. Then we see our protagonist studying the orc schedules and noticing that the hunting group leaves in the morning and returns before sunset. He realizes that the only way to pass the challenge of defeating the orc tribe, which has more strength and greater numerical capacity, is by using fire as a weapon. Our protagonist waits for the hunting group to leave the village to start a massive fire at different spots to create chaos and prevent the hunting group from re-entering to protect the village. It was necessary to get rid of as many orc workers as possible before the orc warriors return. The protagonist manages to assassinate a worker who went alone to collect water from the river and activates their unique trait to absorb the orc's spirit. You have absorbed the orc's spirit. 
Your ability has increased to 9%. We see an orc hunter waiting behind the young warrior, observing everything that happened. Our protagonist tries to turn around as quickly as possible and manages to block the orc hunter's powerful blow, but upon seeing the strength of their opponent, he decides to absorb the spirit they collected to increase their power. Absorbing stored spirits, your stats permanently increase. After receiving a boost in strength and agility, our protagonist swings their sword, defeating the orc hunter. After absorbing the spirit of the orc hunter, our protagonist is surprised to immediately heal their wounds and receive a significant increase in stats. We see our protagonist deciding to return to the village through the burning forest. He analyzes the situation and confirms that there are five enemies left, with the orc tribe leader at the end whom they must assassinate to complete the challenge. Our protagonist knows they have to defeat the three orc workers first and then bring down the leader. The young warrior attacks, easily cutting down the orc workers, but behind them, the orc hunter is ready to counterattack. Our protagonist manages to block the first hit and begins dodging the rest of the blows while the tribe leader prepares a spell. We see them thrust the sword into the chest of the orc hunter, who falls dead due to the severity of the wound. But the orc tribe leader had already prepared a fire spell, which they direct straight at our protagonist, who manages to defend against the direct attack but not the heat of the flames. You have achieved the title of Fire Endurer. The fire resistance ability has been created. We see the orc tribe leader surprised to see the protagonist unharmed after the attack, but our protagonist is not pleased with the leader's cowardly move. They slowly approach the tribe leader and swing their sword to cut off both of their arms. The terrified orc tribe leader decides to escape to one of the shelters to hide. Our furious protagonist calmly pursues them and is surprised to find the leader inside the shelter, hugging two small orcs. One of the small orcs kneels in front of our protagonist, begging for mercy. We see our protagonist start to doubt their actions, but then the young orc warrior tries to pull out a hidden knife and lunges at our protagonist to attack. He is immediately stopped with a strong blow that takes the small orc's life, followed by an attack from the leader and the other small orc at their side. Our protagonist, without hesitation, swings their sword, cutting down both orcs and ending their lives. Congratulations, you have passed the second trial of the tower. Then the scene takes us to the waiting room where we see our protagonist searching for new items to replace his old shield, which was no longer useful for the upcoming challenges. We witness the protagonist checking the chat of the difficult mode community to find out that half of the challengers had died in the second trial. He is surprised to see that one of the members announces knowing how to return to planet Earth. Our protagonist knows that if he manages to return to Earth, he can retake the hunter's exam and pass it without any problems. However, he was only on the second floor, and since he couldn't go back yet, it was best to absorb the spirits he collected in the second challenge to improve his condition. After absorbing the spirits, our protagonist feels overflowing with strength and decides to open the store to buy various equipment that will help him overcome the challenges ahead. He decides to train with his new items and stats before the third trial begins. He knows he needs to become as strong as possible so that no one humiliates him again. You have entered the third trial of the tower. The theme of this trial is a duel, defeat the guardian of darkness. As the trial begins, we see our protagonist being attacked by the guardian of darkness. After receiving the first attack, he decides to repel the guardian with a kick. While they face each other, our protagonist realizes that the Guardian of Darkness is copying his exact movements. To confirm his theory, he lunges directly at the Guardian, positioning himself on its back, and then cuts its chest. We see the Guardian recovering from the wound with the same regenerative ability, confirming the protagonist's initial suspicions. Later, the Guardian lunges directly at the protagonist, positioning itself on his back, but is blocked by the young warrior, who repels it again with a combination of attacks. 
When our protagonist thought he was on the verge of victory, we see the Guardian pull out a sword from its arm and start replicating the same combination of attacks as the protagonist. Our protagonist knows that to defeat this monster, he will have to use all his power in a single attack. He launches himself directly at the Guardian, activating all his abilities and swinging his sword, managing to cut the Guardian in half but losing an arm due to the Guardian's counterattack. Our protagonist screams in pain for the loss of his right arm but knows he can't stop until he finishes the enemy. He puts his shield in front of his chest and runs with all his might towards the Guardian to bring it down. Seeing that the Guardian barely survives the attack, our protagonist decides to kill it with a strong shield strike. Congratulations, you have overcome the third trial of the tower. You have entered the waiting room, all your wounds have been healed. Curious about the strength he gained in his last battle, our protagonist decides to test his strength against the wall of the waiting room. The scene shows how after the fight, our protagonist had absorbed the spirit of the Guardian of Darkness, causing his unique trait to increase. Now, our protagonist had the ability to copy a random skill from the enemies whose spirits he absorbs. Our protagonist was happy because he never thought he would have such a bizarre ability. Entering the group chat of the difficult mode community. Our protagonist is surprised to see that the entire community is frantic as they reveal that the next trial is against teams and involves killing another challenger. You have entered the fourth trial of the tower. The theme of this trial is teamwork, defeat the Goblin King before the rival team. You have been paired with other challengers. We see our protagonist paired in a team of three people, and the first to take the initiative is a mage who was already a hunter and specialized in supporting the team. The second to present himself is also a hunter specializing in melee combat. Then, our protagonist introduces himself, stating that he also fights in close combat, but he is not yet a hunter, knowing that this comment could cause problems in this world full of people who treat you like trash if you don't have a respected name. The second hunter tells him to stay behind, try not to cause trouble, and they enter the Goblin King's castle to complete the mission. Once inside the castle, three goblins attack the second hunter, who blocks their attacks. The second hunter wonders why the goblins have so much coordination and what our protagonist is doing to help. The young warrior responds that he should pay attention to the battlefield and tells the support he will go help the second hunter. She shouts not to leave her alone, or they will attack her from behind. However, she turns around and realizes that all the goblins from the rear guard were already dead. Then, two goblins jump to attack the second hunter, who manages to block the attack but not the attack of a third goblin who manages to take away his sword. The hunter thinks he's going to die from a goblin that lunges at him while cursing his bad luck for being paired with a rookie. Our protagonist makes his appearance and quickly kills the goblin, telling the hunter to stay behind because he is just a damn nuisance to the team. Immediately, our protagonist performs a combination of attacks to kill the remaining goblins, also achieving the title as a goblin hunter. After killing all the remaining goblins, our protagonist absorbs the spirits of the fallen and gains the ability to increase his field of vision. The second hunter seizes the situation to accuse our protagonist of being lucky in battle, but the young warrior tells the group that from now on, he will take the team's leadership and asks if anyone has a problem with that. The second hunter resists accepting the protagonist's abilities, but the support tells him it's okay because she trusts his skills. Once the mission resumes, a group of violent goblins approaches, immediately being killed by the protagonist. We see the team continuing their way in search of the king, and our protagonist feels something and starts running, with the team following him. Apparently, they reach the center of the square where they can see several bodies of slain goblins. The group knows that the rival team has already passed through the square, so they have the advantage, but the protagonist sees that the blood is still warm and they must not have passed long ago. Another scene takes us to the rival team, where we can see them fighting a group of goblins without difficulty and having great combat skills. 
A participant from the rival team had great assassin skills and was the person in charge of advancing quickly with the mission. They soon reach the Goblin King's door and decide to enter to quickly finish the fourth challenge of the tower. Once they were about to enter the tower, they are stopped by the system. The battle with the Goblin King will not begin until only one team remains. The rival team wonders why they can't enter, and we see a barrier blocking the way to the enemy boss. It's the protagonist's team that managed to reach the boss room before the rival team made their entrance. Both teams look at each other and understand that the only way to advance to the king's room is by annihilating the rival team. Our protagonist says he will lead the attack and asks the support to help him with some speed buffs. The support asks him to be careful since the rival team looks powerful and coordinated. The protagonist tells her not to worry and approaches the rival team slowly while receiving the buffs. The rival team prepares to face the warrior, but the protagonist lunges at the enemy team with total speed. The enemy team receives him with a defensive skill to block his path, but the protagonist swings his sword with a force capable of breaking the barrier protecting the rival team, leaving them exposed and allowing him to immediately kill two enemies. We see both group leaders facing each other, clashing their swords in a combination of attacks and blocks. The leader of the rival team thinks he is more skilled than the protagonist but doesn't understand why all his attacks are being blocked. The protagonist quickly positions himself behind the rival leader and launches his final attack, which is blocked by the leader of the rival team. Our protagonist wonders how he blocked that last attack but realizes that the leader of the rival team is using an ability that allows him to see the movement of his sword in advance. The leader of the rival team repositions himself, but we see the protagonist's shield heading towards him to strike him. We see how the protagonist used his shield as a distraction so the enemy wouldn't see that our protagonist was hidden behind the shield to deliver a direct sword attack to the leader of the rival team. We see how our protagonist is able to kill the last member of the rival team, but his hand trembles from taking a human life. The support asks the protagonist how he feels, but he tells her that he's fine and they should continue the battle against the Goblin King. The scene takes us to the Hall of the Goblin King where we see our protagonist effortlessly cutting the king's throat and killing him on the spot. Congratulations, you have passed the fourth trial of the tower. As a reward, the entire team's statistics increase, you can proceed to the waiting room. We see the second hunter being the first to leave, and at the end of the scene, the support thanks our protagonist for helping them overcome this challenge. To reassure the protagonist, the support tells him that if he hadn't killed them, she would have taken care of it, as those are the rules of the tower. Our protagonist thanks her and watches as the girl leaves. Only our protagonist remains, wondering whether he should absorb the souls of the humans he killed. He wonders what will happen to him once he takes a step forward and decides to absorb a human spirit. Our protagonist makes the decision to absorb the spirits of the rival team and promises himself to keep advancing in the tower. The scene takes us to the resting room where we see our protagonist buying an item called the Return Stone, which will allow him to return to Earth for a period of three days. We see how the protagonist immediately uses the item and returns to the room where he lived. But our protagonist immediately realizes that he has returned with all his statistics and all the items he gained in the tower. We see how the first thing our protagonist does is call the owner of the academy and asks him to allow him to take the hunter exam one last time. And here ends the story of our necromancer, who fought for long seven years to fulfill the promise he made the day he lost everything. But now he has the ability to become an incredible hunter with broken abilities that no one else in the world possesses. I hope you enjoyed this summary, and if you want to receive a second part, leave it in the comments. Thank you for joining us on this adventure and if you want to receive more stories of the best Manawas, do not hesitate to like, click on the notification bell and share with all your friends. Remember, this is your good friend Jake and we'll see you on our next adventure.